morning, everybody. We'll be starting a little bit as people come in. We have Rebecca and Alex. Hello. Glad to see all of you virtually. Or I guess I should say see your names. I know a lot of you. So we do have the Q&A today. I'll be monitoring that. So if something comes up that's pertinent, if you don't mind, I'll interrupt you. And then uh, we also have a chat room going as well. I'll keep my eyes open for everything. Oh, thank you. Well, we're definitely going to do, we're going to have thank some you. interactive fun today. So oh, we, well, we want that chat to be, to be used and that Q&A to be used for sure. Okay, fantastic. Alrighty, let's see how we're doing here. Everyone make sure you're uh, on mute. Well, I'm going to start so that we can uh, get going here. Okay, good morning. Jim Fergal here with WorkNet DuPage. Uh, website is worknetdupage.org. I'm the facilitator of the uh, virtual job club and I welcome everyone today. Uh, I'm going to do some administrative announcements and then we will get to uh, Rebecca and Alex as they talk about connecting your brand through cover letters and hear about some of uh, College of DuPage's uh, services. Okay, I'm the manager of Job Seeker and Veteran Services. Uh, Javon Morris is on uh, today. Uh, she is a workshop facilitator and another one of my uh, staff, uh, Jennifer Wigeman, is also a workshop facilitator. So we do uh, the job clubs and we do the uh, uh, job search workshops. Uh, we are funded through the WIOA grant, which you may hear it termed that way, but really it's the uh, Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. It's job training funded by Congress. Uh, we have a virtual job club uh, that we are now doing uh, twice a month. Uh, it's open to the public. I will go uh, in a moment, show you where you can go to find, uh, if you're new, to uh, sign up with WorkNet DuPage. Uh, for people who are working with us that are approved for the grant, uh, we do have job search workshops uh, for the registered uh, clients. We do have uh, training grants up to $10,000. Uh, and we do have layoff to launch every Tuesday. So the website you want to go to uh, is right down here, worknetdupage.org. All righty. So what you want to do is you want to go to our Get Started page at worknetdupage.org, uh, and there will be uh, a questionnaire there that you can fill out, or you can call and if one of my staff is available, I'm not taking phone calls, they can ask you some questions on the phone. Uh, the questions is looking at all the different services uh, that you may need uh, that we partner with, that we can refer you if necessary. Uh, layoff to launch is every Tuesday, uh, starting at 9.30. 
uh, talks about how you may qualify for grants up to $10,000 uh, and continue to receive unemployment, don't need to pay it back, as well as uh, receiving help uh, with the job search. We are not a placement agency, we teach you how to fish, we teach you how to look for the positions. Although we do have uh, a business services that uh, do work with employers, because if we train you, we want to help you find positions as well. We also have a uh, position, well, actually a grant, I should say, uh, that is for uh, rental assistance as well. So if you are new or even if you do need rental assistance, um, let's just go with if you are new to the program, go to layoff to launch at worknet2page.org. If you are already working with one of our counselors, uh, I would recommend you talk with our counselor about that. Okay. Little Zoom etiquette, if you will. Uh, basically, uh, no bizarre, you know, off the wall, any negative type of comments uh, in the chat room. Uh, it is open, so uh, please keep things related to the topic that we have today. Uh, we also have the Q&A open as well. Uh, so you have, if you have any questions, uh, please type them in there. Uh, I will periodically talk with Alex and uh, Rebecca about uh, the questions as they come in, if they're relevant to the topic at hand. Okay, let's see what else. This is being recorded and we will post it on our website uh, next week, uh, probably around, I don't know, two to three business days, sometime or close to the middle of the week, uh, because we do have to uh, download it, edit it, uh, and then post it. And so this is just one of the things we do. But it'll be up on our website. And by the way, if you go to uh, worknetdupage.org uh, webinars, uh, you will see all the job club uh, webinars that we have had since April. So there's a lot of great content on there, everything from interviewing to uh, communicating and, and just the whole job search process is on there. So at this time, I'm going to switch the screens over uh, to Rebecca and Alex. And we'll see how this goes, huh? <laughs> and you should be okay. All right. Well, Alex, will you kind of right. work on pulling things up? I will. Yeah. I'll start talking. So <laughs> we can give you time for that. Um, so hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to our presentation today on uh, kind of fitting that brand into your cover letter, the scariest part of the job uh, preparation part for me. I, <laughs> cover letters are never my favorite thing. Uh, so I am Rebecca Rivers, and I am a career specialist at College of DuPage. Uh, we are a free office at College of DuPage that offers services to students, alumni, and community members for all parts of the job search process, uh, whether that's creating a resume and cover letter, interviewing, uh, job search tips, um, LinkedIn uh, information, <laughs> tips on social media presence, branding, uh, all sorts of things. So, um, so our office does this a lot. Uh, and we'll talk more specifically about our services before we leave today um, and how you can get in contact with us. But we, we offer a variety of services and we try to help um, as many people as we can. Uh, and I will also say we work with um, uh, Adela from uh, who works with specifically uh, with the WIOA um, uh, grant and, and, and with WorkNet DuPage to facilitate those $10,000 grants. If that training is something that you want to do at College of DuPage, she is someone that is kind of permanently on location to help you get uh, get to us and get to some of the programs that we that we offer um, at COD. Um, all right, Alex, looks like we are up. So your turn. 
<laughs> yeah, so my name is Alex H. Mann. I'm also a career service specialist at College of DuPage, working with community members, alumni, students, job seekers, just as much as Rebecca said with the services that we offer. A little bit more about me. I am a clinical mental health uh, counselor with a background in career development and training. So I'm really excited to present to you and present with Rebecca because at a very fundamental level, whether or not you're transitioning into a very specific career, cover letter writing is, once you have those skills to write those, those are things that you can apply whenever you're making transitions into new positions, into new careers. I think it really starts at the foundation. And I think that's also where, what we're going to be covering today. So hopefully you're going to walk you're going to walk out of here feeling more comfortable writing your own resume and taking that next step. Yeah, I, I think the cover letter, once you have the that I, the idea of it, you know, it can be obviously customized, but I think it helps you sell yourself on every level, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's just in the cover letter itself or on a resume or in an interview or on your LinkedIn profile, it's the act of writing it out and thinking it through. Um, and sorry, Alex was kind enough to give you background about herself and I, I did <laughs> not, which is <laughs> that I worked in human resources first part of my career and then I, I transitioned to higher education and I worked as a professional writing slash English teacher and, and now I do this. So, um, but that, that, I, that act of writing, um, writing out uh, your ideas in a cover letter can actually be, I think, very helpful to give you things to say and ways to talk about yourself going forward. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get started. Here. Okay. So just a few, just a few more things. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, we're going to be starting off today's presentation talking about wellness as a part of the job search this i believe is fundamental when we're talking about any type of preparation because if you're not in a in a place where you can be creative and make the the connections you need to to make yourself stand apart or to build that professional brand it's not going to work out so well. It might be actually more challenging. And so I always think it's important to think about the whole picture, including self-care. And I've included a few different tips in here just to walk you through some of the ideas for yourself. One would be making sure that you break up your time. So if you're someone who needs some structure that, you know, I need to spend 30 minutes only, or I need to spend an hour only today to be able to complete everything else, my other responsibilities, then that's what you give yourself. If you're a person who just feels like you need to create space for the other things in your life while you're job searching, try that approach. Whatever you do, just make sure that you're giving yourself time to take a break because what will happen is if you spend hours and hours and hours and hours thinking about the same thing, it's actually very hard to break out of that cycle and no new ideas are gonna come into that. So that's why I stress taking breaks as well as creating your space, making sure that you're in a space that you feel more comfortable in. Now, we don't always have the option of having the most ideal space, but creating an ambiance or making sure you have a blanket to stay warm, just giving yourself a little bit more to make the experience positive. And then my last tip is turning those worries and fears into questions. So I have a few examples on the right-hand side, but the one that I like to point out is, sometimes I hear, this is too much. I feel overwhelmed and frozen in place. I say, let's make that into a question in the sense of, how can I make this more manageable for myself, right? The key word being more manageable. That way I have a question I can work on and have some answers hopefully too. So just keeping that in mind with the career, with the career search and wellness. The other kind of topic I wanted to talk about, because I think this is also huge, and I think our office stresses this as well, is the idea of professional brands, professional personal brands. And if you're unsure about 
what exactly that means, or maybe you've heard it before, but you're like, no one's ever given me a definition. I like to think about it in the sense of what brands we do know, right? And working from there. So if we think about coffee, how many brands do we know sell coffee? Tons and tons, and here are just a few samples of that. But what is most interesting is that the way that they distinguish themselves from each other is with their brand, how they say things, their appearance, their experience. You know, walking into a Starbucks versus walking into Dunkin' Donuts is a completely different experience. Yet all of these coffees, or all of these companies sell coffee as their main element. So thinking about this for you as a professional, what is your brand? You know, what makes you stand out from professionals who maybe have the same previous job title or the same education? What makes you different? You know, thinking about what skills and abilities are you most proud of? And what do you want the employer to walk away with remembering from you? So, that's kind of how, anything you wanted to add, Rebecca, as far as professional branding? Yeah, I just, I think it, it is an important piece of the puzzle because it's, it's something that gives us confidence. Just kind of going back to that self-care piece too, is once you feel that you, you have your hook or, you know, kind of what makes you, what is you when it comes to the job search, I think that's helpful uh, for confidence building and again, to help you create all these documents and, and do all the pieces of the job search. I think it's also important to know that it might, uh, it might even, while it kind of stays the same, it also kind of doesn't stay the same, that your brand might change a little bit depending on which employer you're talking to or what job you're applying to or just your state in life, right? Like your brand today is probably not going to be your brand in 10 years, right? It's going to definitely sure. something that changes over time, but it's something, there's some things of it, right? That may, that may stay the same. I would also say sometimes, you know, when we say things like what, what makes you stand out or what makes you different people get nervous because they mm -hmm. think, well, there's nothing unique about me. There's nothing special mm -hmm. about me. I'm not different than anyone else. And I think it's, it's not so much that, you know, no, not everyone has like some standout Marcus, unique yeah. thing that no one else on the earth has. <laughs> it's, but, but the combination of you is what's unique. It is what's mm -hmm. different. And, and the confidence that you bring to it is what's different. So I think that it's not necessarily about trying to think of the most quirky thing or the most unique mm -hmm. thing about you. It's just about trying to understand yourself. And when you understand yourself and the skills and the, the background that you bring, that's going to be your brand. And you're going to find a way to, to sell that in a, in a way that makes you stand out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are all different types of pieces, right, to this idea. And right. Today, we're going to focus on cover letters. And I think we're going to go over some pretty good activities that might help you with other elements in this branding to help you identify how do your unique experiences make you stand apart from the rest. Yep. All right. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we wanted to do a quick check-in to see where you all were. Yeah, just to do, um, just, yeah, to kind of check in, see where, where you're at with a cover letter writing. So again, by the end of today, we want, we hope that you'll have some things to walk away with for your brand for cover letter. Um, but we want to customize this a little bit, right? Or at least have an understanding kind of where people are at. So if you want to go in that chat and, and give us a letter um, of which one describes you, we'd love to, to see that. All right, I'm getting some B's, some C's, a few, an A and a D, but mostly B's and C's, it looks like. Another A in there. Okay. Yeah. All right, so, so some people that have some experience, but they don't feel fully confident or maybe they feel like they've written a few good ones or some that feel that there there's another a in there that are new to cover letter writing good perfect okay yeah i think that's about the audience that we're we're at for this like we're going to give you some some details but it's it's going to be more 
we're going to do some activities today. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you all are open mm -hmm. <laughs> to doing some, some things that might be a little different than what you're used to, um, yeah. just to kind of help push you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And oh, we being... have a hate to write. <laughs> Do you see that? Oh, I like your creative thinking, though. This yes. is going to be good. <laughs> and with that note, if you could, if you could bring out some pen and paper or have a word document available to you, so you have that for the activities going forward. Okay. All right. So just some basics on cover letters. Not anything I think that's super unusual, but it might be surprising for some of us. So what is a cover letter? A cover letter provides a frame for reading your resume, right? It is a way to, to help introduce your resume, to help focus on the most important parts of your resume. Uh, I like the quote that Alex found here. Uh, it says, in a minute, you are going to read my resume. Here are the most important aspects of my experience and how they apply to this opportunity. So a couple things to unpack from that. It's number one, this letter is going to highlight the things I really want you to pay attention to on my resume, right? We guide the reader. Right? Readers read how we want them to read. So the more work we do to help guide them to the things we want them to see and focus on, the better off we are. And two, how they apply to this, this opportunity. In other words, cover letters are unique. They, mm -hmm. and what is it not? It is not a blanket cover letter. And we do not send the same cover letter to every job. It needs to be customized and unique to that position are there going to be things that are the same or similar? Yes. But you want to, to work to get that, that cover letter to be talking about this job, this company, and how your customized resume is going to tell them how you fit into this opportunity. Take the work away from them, right? Make it so they automatically see that what your experience and background and brand that you have is exactly what it is that they need. Um, what isn't a cover letter, it is not a copy of your resume, right? They have that, so we don't need to, to repeat. Um, as I said, it's not a standardized thing. Um, of course, we don't want any grammar errors in there. Um, it's not a bragging piece. I mean, we want to talk ourselves up, but there's a difference between saying, I'm the best that there's ever been, versus I am good at this. <laughs> There's yeah. a little, little difference there. Um, here's the last two I think are important because I see these often with cover letters. We want to stay away from irrelevant information. Keep it focused on this job and this exper and your experience and, and, and their, their job posting. Uh, and, and keep it specific, right? Not super vague. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and don't add things in that they don't need to know or that they could just find out by looking at your resume. And the last piece there, history of how long you've <laughs> wanted this job or been looking for this job, um, that is a common thing that I'll see at the yeah. beginning of a cover letter, right? Like ever since I was a child, I have been <laughs> looking for, for this kind of work or this kind of job. And here's mm -hmm. the thing, in an interview, we can absolutely work out potentially a, uh, an answer to a question where you might bring in some things from your younger years or how you got interested in this, this topic, things like that. But the cover letter is not the place for that. <laughs> there, the, the real estate is too prime. We need to focus on the skills and, and the things that, that they want to hear about uh, when it comes to the cover letter. Mm -hmm. What would you like to add, Alex? I just wanted to say about when you're talking about full of irrelevant information, or, you know, for t writing to generally about coffee. I like to always bring it back to coffee in the sense ah. of what are you more interested in if I were to give you two descriptions of coffee? One is this is the best coffee in the world or the other one is this is hints and aroma of chocolate, almond, and caramel, right? So it's very, it's specific. It has an intended audience Right, and there's not really this vague, ambiguous, what do you mean by best coffee in the world? And I think it's the same for cover letters. Yeah, oftentimes there's a lot of times it'll just be a list of soft skills, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a hard worker who is good at task management and talking to customers and like these are great general ideas, but they're not necessarily specific to you and your situation and the job 
that you're applying for. Yeah. All right. So the other important part to think about with the cover letter before you get started is that relationship. You, kind of, Alex, you just kind of talked about that as like kind of connecting to the to the audience, right? Like who you're writing to, and these are some great questions that you can kind of have in front of you to be thinking about when you're writing your cover letter. And actually, I think sometimes um, even just taking the act of writing out your answers to these or typing them out, of course, um, could actually give you a good first draft that you could then obviously make some changes, edits, move, you know, it's not going to be a perfect thing, but it might just give you some of those ideas, some of those things that you can then pull some sentences out of and, and kind of help you with your cover letter. Um, you know, some things starting at the beginning there is just a basic thing. Who are you writing to? Um, do you know the name and address? Of course, we want to know the name and the, of the person that we're writing to, a specific name if possible. But I think you could also take that question deeper, like who is this company and who is this department, right? Who is this person? So as much research as we can do ahead of time is super helpful. Um, what action am I hoping this person will take? So make sure that you know, you're know you clear in your letter what you want that to be and, and guide your words according to that. How knowledgeable um, if this person, uh, or would this person um, be about my, my features? Um, like what would you want them how much would they would they know how much do you want them to know um why do i want to work for this employer uh that's to be honest that's the big thing i just think of job search like dating right you know it's like people want to feel wanted well companies want to feel wanted too right so they want to know why you picked them why them and not the other company right so what is it why do you want to work for this employer and how am i connected geographically to this opportunity that seemed that's very interesting thing right now, right? As the idea of remote work. And is it just remote right now? Is it going to be remote going into the future? So maybe, maybe now geographically, we're a little more open to what opportunities we might do. Um, and then what else does this person need to know about me? Uh, so what is it that is going to sell them on you? So just some questions kind of help guide you through that process. Um, Alex, mm -hmm. what did I miss in there? What, what would you like to add in there about those I think you did a I think you did a great job I just knowing your audience understanding if you have a connection to someone or if you're writing to a job posting where there's a you don't have that direct connection and you're writing more to like a hiring committee versus you do know this person maybe you've had an informational interview with them those are going to look like two completely different letters potentially, but the idea being the audience is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true, right? If you've had some sort of, like you met a person at an event and they said, hey, send me your resume, that's a very different cover letter than, uh, than someone that, you've, that you don't know, right, that mm -hmm. you've never met. Um, yeah. We did have a question, yeah. yeah, which is a common one, which is mm -hmm. what happens when you don't know the name or don't know mm -hmm. who you're sending your cover letter to. Yeah. Uh, what would you say to that one, Alex? So there are a lot of other things that you can do. Um, before I get to that, though, the one thing mm. you do not want to do is write to whom it may concern. Yeah, and not I, that. Yeah, no. <laughs> and I know this was something that was very common, and I think this is a more recent trend, mm -hmm. um, but it's more dear hiring committee or dear hiring personnel. Or hiring manager. Exactly, Yeah to give a little bit more than just to whom it may concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, but I would do everything you can to find a name of some, yeah. you know, looking on the website to see if you can find out who the hiring manager would most likely be. Um, mm -hmm. It's always helpful to have a name if you, if you can find one, but if you can't, you know, dear hiring committee or hiring manager, I think would what works well. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. All right. 
Okay, so here is the most exciting part, I would say, of the presentation is we're going to get into it. We're going to do some, some activities. There are three main ones. The first one I'm actually going to show you how to do more so on my screen, and the other two I'm, we're going to have you do. The first one is the job description work search, and these are all in preparation for writing the cover letter. So this is just to get you start thinking about the ideas, things you could cover in the cover letter. And this first activity, we're going to highlight and underline keywords. We're going to identify themes of skills and experience. And then you're, want, you're going to want to write out a related skill or experience for each bullet point in a job description. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring up my job description over here and show you what I mean. I so, see it. Awesome. Good. This is actually an office manager, office manager slash accounting position for Volition. I'm not sure how many are familiar with this company, but they are a video game company and they are hiring or they were hiring an office manager. So do you need gaming experience? When we read through here, it doesn't sound like it. So when we get to the description, we can start to look at, okay, what are the key words? What are the key skills they're looking for? In this very first sentence, they want an office manager with a strong background in finance. I use myself as an example. This is something I, I don't have. I didn't get a degree. I haven't had that type of position. However, you know, I've created a budget for a career fair with over, I think it was 90 different employers. And so I'm familiar with a type of accounting process with accounts payable through the school, as well as the vendor and the employers. So that is something that I connect to. Now, when I'm going through this process of identifying these themes or skills, I'm not probably, I'm not going to be writing about every single one of these in a cover letter. It's just to get the ideas flowing of how you could connect to it. Right. So this next one is manage the admin and support staff. Now I've never managed admin and support staff. Hi, I have, however, managed interns and student workers. So this again is how do I connect with this description or this using my transferable skills or experience. If you are looking to work for any type of federal or state agency, I highly, highly, highly recommend going through and addressing each and every bullet point in their job description. The number one thing that the, the Human Resources Office of uh, the Labor Department says is they are looking for you to address every single item, whether it's in your cover letter or it's on your resume. So you might not use all these ideas in the cover letter, but when it comes to applying for federal jobs in that resume, you definitely need to. And other jobs, maybe not as much um, that you have, have to hit everything, but you want to try to hit as many things as you can. And so that cover letter gives you that extra real estate to maybe address some things that aren't in your resume or aren't as clear mm -hmm. in your resume. Yeah. And so then I would just go through, you, you don't have to use PDF. You could print this out, but just highlighting the keywords and writing that your connection to that. This is just one way this is just one activity you could use to start thinking about cover letters. And I think, you know, you said something too, um, I know we were talking about this presentation, the idea that, you know, not everyone's going to do all of these activities. They may not do them in this order, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe some situations, one appeals to you more than the other. Um, but I, hopefully there are things that you, tools that you can take away and kind of use as you go forward. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So now we have the projects grid. Yeah. So the projects grid is a, I love this idea as a way to break down projects you've worked on in the past and thinking about how you talk about them. 
Uh, and this, I think, to be honest, the Projects Grid is great for a cover letter, but it can also be helpful for interviewing, for your resume, right? All, all of those different materials that are out there. Uh, but I think part of the idea for me is I see the cover letter almost as in between the resume and the interview. I want my cover letter to be something that inspires an interview question, mm -hmm. right? Or helps them to with ideas to ask me about or something that they're they, I want I want to interview this person because I want to hear more about this thing that they're talking about uh, and so projects things that we've worked on can be great places for stories right people remember mm -hmm. stories they love stories so the more stories we have in our pocket I think the better off we'll be and so for this one we're going to pick a particular project we've done in the past and really dive a little deeper into it. So for that particular project, what were the challenges that you had to overcome? Um, what were some maybe mistakes or things that didn't go quite as, as you planned for those? What were parts of it that you enjoyed? This is where we start to get into the brand piece of it, right? Like we start to kind of self-assess, like what are the things that I really like about the work that I've done in the past? Like what pieces of that do I, did I enjoy the most? Um, how did I show leadership? when I was doing this project, what were conflicts that maybe I had with coworkers or, or just with, you know, the system, right? There's always bureaucracy <laughs> or things that we have to get through. Um, and then what would you do differently about that project? If you fill this out for a few key projects, you have set yourself up. You've got things that you can pick and choose from to put in a cover letter. You have things you can pick and choose from to talk about in an interview. Um, you have bullet point ideas for your resume. Uh, I mean, this mm -hmm. can be, it, you know, you can see how this could be a little time consuming, but honestly, like the work that you put in, I think will, will pay, pay off as you're, as you're doing um, these projects. You know, if you got out a piece of paper, I know we didn't want to spend too much time with this, but just if you want to jot while we're sitting here in our brain space, a few projects that you're thinking about, like, I want to go back um, and we will make this, we will share the th this uh, link to this presentation but if you wanted to, to just jot down some ideas real quick um and then at, maybe while they're doing that alex if there's mm -hmm. anything you want to add about how you think about this grid i love this grid um it's just a different way to think about experiences in the sense of you know you've probably had projects in multiple areas in your job position and it wasn't your job title but you can speak about them potentially here. And sometimes this helps prompt us to remember, oh, you know what, I actually did that and I could talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think for me thinking about um, projects that I've done, sometimes it seemed like it was just like, oh, that was just like a thing I did, mm -hmm. you know, and it happened and it's over. But when you go back to it, you know, you think about, oh, you know, like, well, when I actually, when we rolled out that new software, I, you know, even if I wasn't the project lead, right, I maybe had a big part in the project and I did have my parts that I had to work on dur throughout that project, right, that mm -hmm. were, there were my pieces of it. And so maybe, you know, when you start to think about it, yeah, I guess there was a, it was a little challenging to figure this part out, but I, I figured out how to do it or, um, you know, even again, even if I'm not the lead of a project, I still have leadership mm -hmm. over the parts that I did. Exactly. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That transferable skill piece is the, I think, probably the most Big. important. <laughs> yeah. So looking at the job posting might inspire you with what projects maybe to focus on, right? Mm -hmm. In your, your project grid. Yeah. Okay, so the next, the last one for this piece is a SWOT analysis. We're going to be building a diagram of strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats, and I will go over what those are, I promise, as well as, pro so you want to provide examples that demonstrate your connection to these themes. And they'll, ha they'll help to include ways to overcome discrepancy between you and their ideal candidate. So what a SWOT analysis can look like. If you have a moment, grab that piece of uh, paper and a pen and kind of create these four areas. You'll see you, don't, you can put three different lines underneath them. We won't be working with all of those three lines, 
but just as a rough format for yourself, try and create something like that. And so it, you know, it's a, anyone that's done business, right? This is a thing that, that businesses do. And you mm -hmm. know what? We found that it actually works well um, for, for us to do, right? To, to approach our job search almost like a, a work opportunity in some ways. So looking at it in, the, in, term, in those business, that business language. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if you're still working on that grid, that is okay. You still have the structure and format on this page. What I have done is added some questions to help your analysis to really dig into these four areas. So starting off with the S or strengths, this refers to the features and benefits as they apply to the position and how you connect to them. Weaknesses refers to what you might be lacking from the point of the organization. Opportunity refers to the learning opportunities and benefits you see about the job. And the last one, threat. No one is really threatening you. There are, it's just the truth, there are outside factors that could influence your situation, such as geographic location, economy, but if you use these questions to kind of help guide these ideas, you can really come up with some, a unique perspective on yourself in the sense of you've identified strengths, um, areas that you're lacking, opportunities, as well as things that are impacting you. Um, and if we'll take, so this is one of the areas for the five minute activity, what we would like you to do is reading through these questions, create at least one bullet point or idea for each of the four areas. Yeah, so pick a job that you maybe are thinking about applying to or maybe recently applied to or just maybe an ideal job or the you know, kind of job that you've been been looking at. And then, yeah, pick a question for maybe each one. Or, you know, you can kind of combine up the questions, you know, make your own. But, uh, but try to come up with the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat for a job that you're applying to or would like to apply to. Mm -hmm. And I will put a timer on for another four minutes as well as try to play some nice jazz music. Ooh, jazz uh, music. I'm going to turn off my camera, but we will, I will still be here. Yes.
All right, we have about one more minute left. I'll give you about another 20 seconds or so to wrap up. Again, this is something you can complete on your own. We will make sure that you have some form or copy of this presentation with all of the questions as well. Right. Welcome back. We had a comment, uh, digging the tunes, very coffee house vibes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Bossa Nova. <laughs> Huge fan over here. Well, and I think it actually goes back to what you were talking about at the very beginning with Create Your Place, right? Like, mm -hmm. I hope, you know, I, I realize my mind goes in a very different place that music without words for me is really helpful if I have to to really focus, you know, and kind of keep it calm. Uh, everyone's different, but mm -hmm. that just is a, a, a that thing of, of creating the right environment can make a big yeah. difference in your mental state when you're mm -hmm. trying to do this kind of work. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so did you want to take some time and see if anyone wants to share? You wanna... I was just saying, does anyone have, um, was, if anyone had any, um, Anything that came out of that that you that you thought was interesting um, or to share? Uh, we did have a question that had to do mm -hmm. with the previous one, but I think could apply to this okay. as well. Sure. Um, which is why not include why not include achievement rather than failure? Or I think even for this one, why talk about weaknesses and threats? So yeah. what's what do you think is a benefit of kind of you know including some focus on negative e? things. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's actually, I love this idea and where this came from, because that's exactly the point of it. If you are, while well, the question may be negative, you're really trying to imply it's actually a success in some form, whether it was, you know, you were able to, in the nick of time, come up with the best answer for a project, or it really was a learning opportunity and now going forward, it's something that is making you successful. So in, in fact, is a success. Um, I think if you were, you know, if you're a little bit worried about or nervous about the negative connotation, this is all, you know, feel, feel free to flip into a challenge. Um, I think it's all about the language that we use, and sometimes we have a preference for how we frame things. So it's very say challenges. I think if you like, if like for weakness or threat, if you want to say challenge, I've heard challenges. You know, for that as well. Just the SWAT, you know, is always nice. Like the way we break it down. But mm -hmm. um, I do think it's helpful too. Number one, right? Employers want to know. Employers know that things don't always go perfectly. They're going to ask you and want to understand. You know times when you've improved yourself. Now on a cover letter, I wouldn't necessarily say go into the, the part that went bad, but you could take the lesson part and you, mm -hmm. could, you could add that in your cover letter. Uh, but I also think it just, if we think about, there's so many times where maybe we don't apply to a position um, we, where we don't um, take that step because of the, we, our perceived weakness and the perceived mm -hmm. threats about applying for it. And actually taking the time to, to write those out 
and think about how we could mitigate those, how we could um, come up with other ways to think about those. I think takes mis demystifies it maybe mm -hmm. is a way to say it or kind of takes the wind out of the sails of those negative pieces um, or it might you know I mean sure there might be times where you realize okay this is not the opportunity for me because of you know this really isn't the, op the environment I want to work in or the place I want to be but I think most of the time when we pick a job description and we're going to do this is something we do kind of want to do and so I think it it's a it's a way to um, kind of really sort through all of that um, and, and make it a positive. Yeah, yeah. great points. Good question. Yeah. All right. So jumping on to the next part. All right, so we've gotten some brainstorming in. We've done a few different activities. Now we're gonna start writing, thinking about writing, but we're gonna start very small. Mm -hmm. And very in small, small, I'm talking about very small. So we're gonna do an activity where we're gonna write a haiku in, in a cover letter-ish theme format. For those who are unfamiliar with what a haiku is, it is a three-line poem. The very first line has five syllables, so five syllables throughout whatever words that you use. The second line has seven syllables, and the third line has five syllables. Again, that's just the three lines. Now, I have included a, an example down here. It says social worker in a youth program, and they've come up with adolescence rock, I enjoy challenge and growth, hire me to change them. These are, you know, I really want you to pick out kind of like three, narrow down the top things you want an employer to know. I know it might be a little bit challenging, but really it's coming to this idea of, okay, what do I really want to make sure that I explain in a cover letter? Yeah, I think that to me, I love um, formatted poetry uh, as a way to kind of force yourself to pick. No, you have to pick just three things or and you have to fit them in this format to kind of really get you to that the heart of it um also i know we had someone that talked earlier about the, how they didn't like writing this is a way of kind of <laughs> writing but in a really short format um that maybe isn't a way to start that isn't quite as painful <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly exactly so we're going to give you about five minutes here um, Another five minute activity. And yeah, and then we'll jump back on. And we want to hear your haikus. By the yes, way. we do. Yes. All right. I'll play that music again. Woohoo.
one more minute. About 20 more seconds. Okay, welcome back. Wow, that was harder and more rewarding <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. Like, yeah, <laughs> it was. It really pushed me to like clarify. And I, I started when one thing, and then I was like, no, that's not like <laughs> so right. different. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you could do that for multiple employers, and you'll start to see that you really do want to highlight different things. It's easier. Mm -hmm. To conceptualize that. Yeah. Does anyone want to share? Take some time, share their wonderful, amazing haiku. You can share them in the chat. Yeah, please do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. We have, okay, are you ready? Here's yeah. our first one. I love nonprofits. I love nonprofits. Okay. They make Earth a better place. Uh, so, okay, we're a little short. That's okay. Or they make Earth a better place. No, no, sorry. Okay. That was me. Okay. Hi, hire me, I will help. Hire me, hire me I, will. I will help. Yeah. If we go with awesome. hire is one. Yeah, hire. I yeah. love it. I love it. Oh, here right? we're getting a bunch. We're getting a bunch. Getting a bunch. <laughs> uh, business and tech. Uh, building the best product right. I am on your team. Oh, Love it. And, okay. you know, honestly, like who cares if they're totally perfect? I mean, the idea is just to get the, yeah. Right. Support is needed. I enjoy making you shine. I am your assistant. Very nice. nice. Organize okay. chaos. I love people at events. I'm the one for you. Like, oh. seriously, like, like just looking at that one. Thank you all for sharing and keep yeah. sharing, please. Um, like organized chaos, I love people and events, I'm the one for you. I don't know this person, I don't know their background, and I don't know what job they're applying for, except that I do, right? Mm -hmm. Like just reading those three statements, oh, this is someone who like takes chaos and makes it organized, they like people, they, they're an event organizer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's the kind of work they want to do, like done, right? Ooh. Yeah. That's Did you want to awesome. take a look? Do you want to to read some? There's a few more that just let me see here. It's a little bit harder well, that's, for oh, me don't to worry look about at that it. I'll, one. I'll I'll read it. No problem. <laughs> okay. uh, accounting work rocks. Hire me to manage your books. I enjoy challenge. Ooh, love it. Oh, these are good. Learning leads to success. I enjoy facilitating learning. Hire me to help you improve employee performance. And again, that's one where yeah. like, okay, you know, even if we go over a little bit with the, the syllables, like it's the concept that's really the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, tech companies are the best. Technology is always making our future better. Hire me to, to help make a difference. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love it. And I think this is a great segue into the next part since we have some good, unique, you know, structured ideas and feel free to, you know, keep putting yeah, them, in, keep there posting them in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I know we've had, we had some questions about like, Hey, I thought cover letters were supposed to be really formal sounding and, you know, a, a letter. Um, and of, yes, d definitely. And we're, we're going to share some examples and go through some of those rules. Um, but I hope 
um, that you'll start to see that the work that you've done with this, this pre-work um, is going to make writing that formal letter much, much easier because you're going to have those ideas in your mind. And maybe it'll break you out of the pattern that you've done cover letters before. Um, and again, the idea right now is whatever we can do to help stand out, right, to, mm -hmm. to show that we were, um, were someone to, to look at. Um, yeah. So here's some tips for writing it out. Um, keep the tone positive and neutral, right? We don't want to go, again, those extremes, right? But we want it to be positive. Uh, use active voice and focus on action verbs. We always want to take what we do and, um, and make it active. I see one that just came in there. Um, let's see. Oh, what was the one? It was tech companies are the best. Technology is always making our future better. Hire, hire me to make a difference. Hire me to make a difference, right? When we even just use words instead of like, I would like to be considered for the position, you know, like mm -hmm. hire me, you know, kind of has that, at least if we have that attitude, right? That active right. attitude. Um, mm -hmm. But anyways, yes, using active voice, um, connect your experiences to the position you're seeking, mutual interests or similarities. Again, they want to feel wanted. They mm -hmm. want to know that you're applying to their job. Um, and super important, what's different, um, well, not different, but, but a little different the way we do it in a cover letter is, is using evidence. I think a lot of times in cover letters, we keep it really vague. Mm -hmm. Like I enjoy working with patients, right? Like as a nurse, yeah. but we don't then follow it up with a little bit of evidence to show that that's true. Um, mm -hmm. And then really the cover letter to me is the opportunity to expand on your resume by giving a little bit more depth to key experiences. Again, people remember and want to hear stories. So if they hear a little bit about a story and they're like, oh, well, I got to, I got to learn more about this and what they did. Mm -hmm. That's a request for an interview, right? So we've got some examples of wording here for you just because I think sometimes we talk about these things, but actually seeing some example sentences is helpful. Um, so that active voice, as a manager at AHM Plumbing, I oversaw this, right? Not, um, you know, while I was managing, um, there were things that I had to oversee, you know, like mm -hmm. that's just kind of that passive voice, right? We want to start with the subject verb, sorry, the English teacher. <laughs> That's the, the active voice. Um, connection, make a connection to the employer, right? During my tenure as the lead archaeologist for the Illinois State Archaeological Survey, I restructured this. Mm -hmm. So resume information, right? During my time at this position, right? But then be specific about what you did there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could even be even more specific. Your job description indicates you're seeking someone with a demonstrated history in sales. As a teacher, I organized the, this, you know, the yeah. sale for this. So that transferable you know, skill, that trying... connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, don't, again, I said this earlier, like we help the reader right? Don't make them work for it. Don't assume that they'll be looking at your resume and cover letter side by side and be able to like connect that or, or guess at it or, or like, no, I got to save that for the interview. And then they'll mm -hmm. ask me about it. Like, well, we need to get the interview. So <laughs> like, not that we want to go on and on in a cover right. letter. We don't have time for that, but you can give them enough, a little bit right? Um, mm -hmm. Evidence, uh, your advertisement stated that you're looking for a hard worker who's willing to go the extra mile. This past year, in addition to raising my two children, I work 20 hours a week on, you know, whatever campaign or something that you did. So mm -hmm. that idea of that evidence, what I love, it's like, here's what you said you'd like. So I'm talking to you, not to the other job, right? I'm talking mm -hmm. to this, you and your job. And then specifically, here is something that I did. And again, this person isn't going to go into detail about, you know, uh, I work 20 hours a week on a um, campaign for, you know, mental health awareness or whatever. They're not going to go into detail about what they 
more specifics about what that exactly was like on their cover letter. But the idea is that hopefully that piques the interest of the person enough mm -hmm. that they want to ask, to bring you in and ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, you, I can tell you, it's okay. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really, you know, I, I really like this one because oftentimes what I hear for anyone re-entering the workforce is, well, I haven't been employed for a while, yes. you know, like, they're not going to hire me for that. The cover letter is a great way to address this. And this example shows how you can do that, right? So giving context to what might have happened, again, as much as you want, um, but why you might have been out of the workforce and how, and in addition to that, like what else you had been doing, you hadn't just been doing one thing, you'd been doing a lot more, right? And picking a relatable experience goes that extra mile too. And I think that goes to, you know, it, when, it, when it comes to a, uh, someone that's changing careers or going into, going back into the workforce, a cover letter is essential. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's essential. I mean, as someone who worked in HR, I will tell you, you know, when it comes to cover letters, some people will say they're not needed, they're old fashioned or, you know, whatever. Um, honestly, you don't know who you're going to get. Like me as a recruiter, mm -hmm. the cover letter was helpful. The resume sometimes would matter a little bit more to me. It would depend on the position I was doing. But honestly, a lot of people that I worked with or know are were like, if I don't have a cover letter, I don't even look. I don't even look at them. Um, or, you know, the cover letter is what sells me, you know, on this person. And so we always say, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a helpful tool and I would say it's even a more helpful tool for people that are changing positions or getting back into the workforce for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then our last one here, one of our, one of the experiences I list on my resume is a, is a volunteer puzzle maker. While on the surface that position seems unrelated, in reality I learned valuable lessons about digital conversion while it, da, 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 da. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Right. You know, it's like, it, again, it's taking something that you did that maybe mm -hmm. seems like a totally different job, but absolutely there's things like transferable skills that, that go, and this is getting really specific using that keywords, right? Mm -hmm. That vocabulary that the employer has been asking for and putting that into your cover letter. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All, right. All right. So Rebecca, we have the fast drafting. We are yeah. at 1010. Oh yes, I know we're so, getting we're getting close. If you guys want to if you guys want to take just let's just take a minute. Let's just take okay. one minute and just draft out some things that you're thinking right now. Hopefully you've been doing that as we've been talking. Um but you know, yeah. We won't necessarily do anything too fancy, but Okay. We'll yeah. put it on for one minute. One minute. Get a little writing done. All right, I'll give you about 10 more seconds. Okay, and we are back. Perfect, I see some blinking. 
can't quite see what that is. Do we have a question? Oh, Rebecca? we have, yeah. Uh, we okay. kind of have a question um, kind of about how do you get people to look at your resume, <laughs> which I think we could address. Maybe we'll address that at the, the end there. Um, okay. Yeah, get through a little bit more. Um, yeah. yeah. And this activity, I, I mean, for me, what it really is is setting those time boundaries mm -hmm. because, again, once you're doing something a really, really long time, even an hour, mm -hmm. it's really hard to come up with new ideas. You can get frustrated. You just feel more challenged. Mm -hmm. So trying you know, taking five minutes and seeing what can you come up with and maybe later on expanding on that. Um, yeah. You are, you are an English teacher, Alex. That is what you are. <laughs> that is exactly, exactly uh, what, how we teach uh, in writing. Um, yeah. I think some people think like you're used to like, oh, I knock this out in one, you know, one sitting. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. I mean, you might get to the point where you can do that. Um, but you know, really, especially in the early stages, it's definitely something that could take a little bit of time to get there. Um, we did also have a question um, asking, is it best not to address a weakness on a cover letter? And I think some of our examples yeah. kind of showed that, that, yeah, I mean, you can, right? Mm -hmm. Like if, if it's, but not, you're not going to say it's a weakness, mm -hmm. but like that, if you consider a, a weakness for you is that you haven't worked in this field directly before, right? Mm -hmm bringing up those, that, that example, that that last example we had where it was like, while it may not seem <clears throat> directly related, you know, this particular job, um, actually, here are some of the things that I did that do relate to what you're asking for, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not saying this is a weakness of mine, but it's kind of taking that weakness and turning it into a, a positive. Yeah, and I think it's a good prompt for maybe you're not directly addressing the weakness, but you're identifying I need to make sure I mention these to hopefully address that in their mind mm -hmm. um, in a way. So what they might perceive as, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we wanted to uh, give you some of the hard, hard facts too. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to go through each of these because they're, they're very common, I think. But, um, and again, we'll make sure you have this presentation, but that real basic, you know, one to two pages, depending on your field, I think for most of us, one page. Um, but, Honestly, once you get into um, some academic fields or, or other areas, it might be longer. Um, you know, making sure that you're using that business letter format, that the, the, your resume and cover letter styles match. Um, some information to make sure you include. Three to five paragraphs, again, that's going to depend. It could be longer, you know, for me working in academia, like when I was a teacher, that we have like two, two page, three page cover letters is a very different thing. Um, but for most of us, right? And, and each paragraph, I would say this to keep the paragraphs themselves, not necessarily super short, but don't go over three to five sentences within a paragraph, mm -hmm. right? I mean, eh, maybe you could go up to six or something, but uh, you know, but the, just to remember, I would yeah. say this, the longer something is, the more you lose readers. And so it's better to move on. Like I'd rather, ha I'd rather see you have more paragraphs that are slightly shorter mm -hmm. than fewer paragraphs that are longer. So That's if you've got two yeah. different jobs or two different things to talk about, I'd rather see it in a separate paragraph. Because again, at, mm -hmm. us today, right? We all know that when we read, uh, we're all so short minded with our reading that I'm much more likely to read something if it's like, shorter paragraphs that I have to read through than something that's really long on a page. Uh, that mm -hmm. can be a challenge. Uh, vary the openings of your sentences. I am the biggest <laughs> failure at this. My, my poor mother, even to this day, I will send her cover letters to read and she's like, Rebecca, every single sentence starts with I. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I, yeah. I think that's one of the biggest challenges for cover for people writing cover letters. I see it all the time. And it's it's not a matter of changing their ideas. It's really about varying the structure of those sentences. Yep. And I think again for a draft, draft it. Oh, Don't yeah. panic about it. Like, oh no. maybe every sentence will start with I. <laughs> like whatever. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You can go back and wordsmith that and change sentences around and, and make it work. You know, um, exactly. it's more just about, like you said, getting the ideas out and then you can, you know, fluff up the language. Um, but not mm -hmm. flowery, not super fluffy. Sorry, I shouldn't have used <laughs> fluff. I think I just saw that word. Uh, you can, uh, hey, we don't want to, we don't want to have, it is prime real estate, right? So we do want to make sure that, that our words 
count uh, and matter. Um, don't exaggerate, don't go overboard. Again, you wanna sound positive about yourself, but here's the thing, show don't tell, right? I guess is kind of what we always say. It's, you know, instead of saying, you know, I am very good at programming, da 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 Tell me when, you know, in my course at College of DuPage, I programmed this mm -hmm. using this language to make it do this, right? Now you've, you've told me you have the skill, right? Or you, you've bragged in a way that you have the skill, but you didn't just say that you have it. You showed it to me. Right. Mm -hmm. So show, don't tell. Um, and then uh, we've got the, the website there. If you haven't been to Purdue Owl, it's a great place. Uh, to, you know, most students will find it at some at some point. Um, if you're like, what's the format for a cover letter they, you know, or a format for any kind of writing, they will have an example for you out there. Um, but I th mm -hmm. think, Alex, you have a couple examples that you yeah. share. Let's see. It is 1018. See. They're not telling us to stop yet. Okay. So I say go show the cover letters. All right. I'll only show a few, promise. Okay. <laughs> um, the first one I won't spend a lot of time on because I think this is a pretty typical format. For a cover letter, I think the key things I want to point out in this sample structure, I'll call it, is the top part of your cover letter should match the top part of your resume. This is a piece of the visual branding. So if I put those two documents together, that top part should be the same. Let's see, again, if you can get the employer's name, awesome, you know, use LinkedIn. If not, there are a few combinations on here. Of course, you don't have to put all of them, but if you like more than one, Go ahead and use that, showing kind of the shortness of it, and then ending, you know, with a more formal dress, and then your name and title. What I do want to say about cover letters is if you're applying for a job where they say, submit your resume to this email, right, or someone says, submit this, you know, send me your resume, you still want to put some form of a cover letter in the body of your email. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly as long per se. Mm -hmm. I think if, you know, if you're questioning that, maybe just go ahead and put the, the entire cover letter. But what is different is this top part, all of the relevant information. So your email, your LinkedIn is actually going to go in your signature at the bottom of the email. You're not going to include the date on that. Uh, on that email because that's embedded in the email coding when they get it. And then the employer's information can be left off to start at dear. Anything you want to add there, Rebecca? Yeah, I think just, yeah, the, the, well, yeah, so just to say, right, if you, if you have a letter to send, if it's a situation where we're sending a letter, great, but even if you, if you're responding by email, like you said, maybe you're not going to attach a cover letter. Maybe you know you're just going to you're going to put it in the body of the email. Mm -hmm. Even if you do attach a cover letter, still put something in the body of the email. A little yeah. bit of information, um, again, just to, to to give them even more. I'm excited to tell you about my experience with this. You know, you can you know learn more in my cover letter and resume attached. You know, just even a little a little salesy thing there. Um, the examples that you have here, the first one there kind of tells mm -hmm. talks about what to put in each paragraph, and that is something that's in our materials um, that, that we'll we'll talk to you guys about how you can access that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it just kind of breaks down you know, paragraph by paragraph. Uh, and I think, I mean, this is information that's out there. So I think mm -hmm. that's why we didn't really want to focus too much on it, but obviously share it. Um, I think the idea is to, to be more creative with our writing and what, what information we include. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, someone is asking, so if, if, they, okay. if, if they specifically say, just upload your resume and there is nowhere to upload a cover letter, then there isn't. You know, I mean, like, okay, you know, then that's, that's what it is. But if there is any opportunity, if it's optional for you to submit a cover letter, it's not optional. Submit the cover letter, right? <laughs> yes. if, if there's a place where you can add additional documents and you could add a cover letter, 
add a cover letter. Mm -hmm. uh, it will always be more impressive to have one. You don't know who the recruiter or the hiring manager is. And trust me, some of them, it's the cover letter is like super important. And, and for, for others, maybe they won't care. But since we don't know who we're getting, mm -hmm. if you have the opportunity to send a cover letter, then do it. Um, again, if there's literally nowhere for you to submit it, okay, you know, right. then you're off the hook for that one. Um, <laughs> but um, but if, if there's a place to do it, uh, do it because it will make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this first example then is if a cover letter, which I wouldn't say is the strongest for many reasons. If we look at the very top, there's nothing. Um, there's no one's information. Now, since this is in a PDF format, I would expect that this is a document that would be attached or, or uploaded. So with that being said, there really should be a contact information section at the top. We do have the date, which is good. It's a good start. But we don't have the employer's information. We haven't addressed it to anyone here. And if you're reading through it and you notice these lines, this is actually more in line with a blanket cover letter. And it really doesn't tell us anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, I believe myself to be an ideal candidate for this position, offering quick learning and adaptability that is needed for this diversified position. They haven't even listed the position that they're applying for. Um, this is key. You need to at least, at least do this to let them know. It shows them that you took the time, mm -hmm. right? You know what you're applying for, even in this small detail. It also helps an HR person or anyone who were to pick up your application know exactly where to send it, mm -hmm. right? It makes it so much easier. And the second sentence, in addition to my enthusiasm for performing well, I bring technical and analytics skills providing to be an asset for the organization. Now, I will say, okay, this might be a setup for the rest of the cover letter, but as I'm going through, there really isn't any definition. There's no, you know, enthusiasm for performing well. Um, technical yeah, and analytical skills. Yeah, I was just gonna yeah. say, I mean, always with writing, it's, you know, um, we are connecting one sentence to the next. Um, mm -hmm. We make a promise to the reader. I am, when, when we have a sentence like that, that says I will bring technical and analytical skills proving to be an asset to the organization. I have now set up in the reader's mind that that is the theme of this cover letter. So the next, I would expect as a reader that the next paragraph right, is going to tell me about their technical skills, and it's going to mm -hmm. go into detail about those, and then I'm going to expect the next paragraph to be about the analytical skills, right, and if you don't follow through on that promise, I'm confused, right, mm -hmm. now it just seems like a vague jumble of words, and I don't know where to follow, mm -hmm. so always, you know, think of that opening paragraph as like you would an old-fashioned essay, I always think of it in a way of mm -hmm. like, you know, give a thesis statement, you know, because of my X, Y, and Z, I would be an ideal candidate, you know, for, for, uh, for you know, this position at this place. And then mm -hmm. prove that to me, <laughs> you know, follow yeah. your promise and talk about those things and go into more detail with In them. the body. Yep. That's yep. where you really go into that detail in those body paragraphs. Um, and last sentence I'm going to read from here just to highlight that it is the first sentence in the second paragraph as I further study this position's job description and reviewed my notes, I grew even more confident that given the resources I gathered, I'm ready to hit the ground running as, I mean, I, they haven't even saved the job description. <laughs> um, they reviewed their notes what did they learn? Like, what are their notes? How are they making the connection? If I'm the employer, how are they making the connection to me? Um, that, and, I, I yeah. see this as fluff, right? Like I could see mm -hmm. someone maybe like putting this sentence in and then following it up with detail, but you don't need to do that. You could just do the detail, right? Exactly. Um, you know, I, I see on the job description, you're looking for X, Mm -hmm. I have had experience with X in my position Y, right? You know what I mean? You don't need to set it up. Just go for it. Go for the content, right? Get mm -hmm. the information in there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I won't spend too much more time on it because I want to get to the stronger one. I was going to say, we got five thing, minutes we've been yeah, told. <laughs> the last thing that I have is, it's kind of hard to tell, but I know this because I did this. If you are working and copying and pasting, you know, from your own documents, um, make sure that your font's all the same because it's very evident that you've copied and pasted if your fonts are different colors, if there's a gray background to it. Um, it just looks very unprofessional. So make sure the size, the font, and the color are all consistent throughout. All right. And last one, again, I won't spend too much on this, but the top, we have that contact information section. We have who we're addressing this to. And if also, so including, you know, following up with our recent discussion. So this one, you know, reminding them we've talked in the past, I'm submitting my resume to formally apply for the position of policy director. All right, so we've made the connection. I know what they're applying for. And in that next sentence, they're doing, they're looking, you know, I look forward to contributing to the important work you do specifically to remote to women's access and to end success in post-secondary education and training. This is very, this is very specific, right? Because mm -hmm. this is where the rest of the cover letter is gonna go. This is gonna spend more time explaining those ideas. And if I were to think about it, I mean, I don't know how many jobs there are out there where that's like the key features, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. The more time you invest in these professional documents, the more likely people are going to take the time to invest in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, again, these will, these samples will be available to, available to you, we'll get to them, we'll get you to, get you them mm -hmm. somehow. Um, so you can do we have, we, oh, Yeah, I was gonna say we need a link yeah. to them, but we'll. Yeah, have that we don't currently have it, no. Okay, all right. So. I'll Which work on does. getting that. Okay. All right. So kind of following up, if there are, are there any last minute questions? Yeah. Um, so I, there, so I, I answered a few questions in the Q and A just to kind of move on. Um, okay. Where do you, what do you think about cover letters where you list out the requirements of the position in one column? and your own qualifications that meet the requirements on the position in another column. Is this an effective type of cover letter? Hmm. That, uh, to me, that's a resume, yeah. right? In a way, mm -hmm. is that your resume is the list, right? Right, so exactly. You know, it's like, it, not that you're listing out their requirements, but like you're, but that's what you should have in mind, right? As you're kind mm -hmm. of writing your cover letter, what bolts do I put in there? What, what information do I put in there? Well, I should be addressing those directly to the job posting. The mm -hmm. cover letter, I think, again, lets you highlight like the key parts of your resume. Yes. So not necessarily like, you're not gonna cover everything on your resume, but you're no. gonna cover what are the three or four most important points from my resume that I want to address in my, in my cover letter. Um, and it gives, it's that story piece. And I think mm -hmm. doing a list takes away the story part because I think that's having that sentence format that we don't have on the resume, that story piece is what makes it more appealing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Very well said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do want to make sure that we get, get you our contact information um, on mm -hmm. here. Um, we, as we mentioned, we are an office available to you. You can meet with one of us uh, <laughs> or one of our colleagues anytime. We're here to meet with you. Um, if you go to cud.edu career services, you will see all sorts of information um, about our office. Um, you can also send us uh, an email at csc at cud.edu and you can request an appointment or request an electronic resume review uh, or cover letter review for that matter. <laughs> And, and we're here to, to help with that. Um, and uh, follow us on social media. Um, Alex, what kind of stuff are we putting on our social media? Oh, so, so many great memes um, <laughs> that I may or may not have made. But no, we, we are very active on social media. And it's actually one of the best ways to see what's coming up in our office. 
Absolutely. And then one other thing I wanted to mention is that we actually, we do webinars every Wednesday <laughs> at noon, um, all semester long. So um, if you want to, to take a look at our, our schedule and potentially um, uh, sign up for those, again, if you go to our website, you will see a workshops tab on there. If you go in there, you'll see the descriptions of what they are, the dates, and the link to, to register. And they're all free. It's like a half hour. We, we, we keep, we try to keep it half we hour. We try to keep it to a half an hour, but as you can tell, we, we like to give as much detail. Go over. We get bit. excited. <laughs> and of course, our, our personal email, not a personal, but I mean, our personal work emails are on there. Mm -hmm. um, you can absolutely email us directly. Like that's, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, we can, mm -hmm. we will definitely do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for everyone joining us today. Yeah, I was say, do we have any, you guys have some things to say at the end here, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> well, I would just like to thank uh, both of you, Rebecca and Alex, because this has been fantastic. Uh, the exercises and showing how uh, cover letter is still important. And I, I mentioned in the chat how just based on a cover letter, I uh, interviewed someone where the resume wouldn't have ever gotten her through. Mm -hmm. uh, that cover letter shows her motivation or why, and that's how you can use that. Um, I am going to... Uh, you need to take over the screen. I'll stop yeah. sharing. There we go. Yeah. So I will share and... Oh, great. Yeah, here we go. Okay, Perfect. so uh, the presentation, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be uh, posted on our uh, website, worknetdupage.org, at webinars. Uh, we do have a survey. Uh, please fill that out. Uh, we use this to determine uh, which topics might be of interest to you and also how we can improve our services. Uh, I didn't have a chance to change this, so I guess we'll go with this today. Uh, <laughs> just send uh, your uh, counselor, Apple 302, and just say it was uh, the cover letter presentation today, and I'll let the counselors know about that. So Apple 302 is the uh, code that you give your counselors if you do have a counselor with WorkNet to Page. Uh, also, let us know when you uh, find a new job. Uh, your new position, uh, the story encourages others. Uh, one of the counselors uh, was emailing me yesterday. Uh, he won't have access to the files till Monday, but he's been averaging one to two people per week getting jobs. Uh, and we even just had someone get a job before they even came into our program. So there is hiring out there. I'd like to give you more info, uh, but I'm trying to get that info from the counselors. I just feel it's important for you to know uh, that there is hiring going on. Uh, most of the workers, I'm gonna say, are Renaissance workers, those over 50, uh, that are finding positions. And uh, like we just found, was it Volition? Uh, it was hiring mm -hmm. and you don't have to be a gamer. To do <laughs> huh? Yeah, I used to work oh. in the video game industry and I was an administrative assistant. I had no video game background. Yeah, I think sometimes people, we don't think about like you could be in, in accounting, but you could, if your interest is in a particular industry, you know, you don't have to be a, ga a, a you know, game designer <laughs> to work in the game industry. Um, you know, they have to have all sorts of other people that work for them as well. So um, I think that's, you know, helpful to, to think about. Yeah, I do believe uh, that you're correct is I was telling some guy who was a like a controller, uh, the same thing. And he says, well, I like uh, NASCAR or something. Should I be a race car driver? I said, no, you know, there's race tracks and there's racing teams and there's ways to do this or with a company that has sports memorabilia for NASCAR, something like Sells that. Sells the car parts. Yes, the mm -hmm. car part, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So the way the grant works, because this is why the uh, job information is so important, is that uh, when people get jobs, we report it to Congress, because this is uh, an act, a law, 
uh, that was enacted by Congress. So if they don't see results, they cut the programs. Um, just we have different metrics to meet. One of them is 70% of people get jobs. And I've been here 25 years. We've always met 70%. Wow. Wonderful. 80% of people have to get jobs for us to get incentive monies. In 25 years that I've been here, we have met 80% all 25 years. And that incentive money allows us to serve more of you, the public. Uh, so when you get a position, let the counselors know uh, the title, the salary, are you receiving benefits? Uh, because all that information is going to help us in the future. We're helping you today because of people in the past. And uh, plus, email me. I like to hear when people get positions. I love <laughs> their stories. Uh, everything's a story. What's your journey? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Coming up next week, uh, Kate Olensack. Uh, she's uh, Chief uh, Human Resource Manager for the YMCA. Uh, she's had a lot of senior HR positions. Uh, I think the last one was with the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, but she's been in uh, Fortune 500 companies. And she's going to be talking about inside the application process. So you're gonna, you can go to worknetdupage.org and uh, sign up for that. Uh, I am going to go back to the code for today. And Alex and Rebecca, again, fantastic presentation. <laughs> I know people are always say, well, you don't need a cover letter. I think you showed today the importance of it. Mm -hmm. If there's an opportunity on the application, please do a cover letter. It Absolutely. Can only, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. and, I, and I do apologize. I was trying to, to save a link to a PDF but I, of the presentation, but for some reason, my computer is being not nice this morning. <laughs> so, so I don't know if there's a, a, a better way to share it with people, but, um, uh, but we'll try to, you can always email us <laughs> if you'd like it. I'm going to have to end this now because yeah. we have another Zoom coming. So yeah. okay. thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Bye. Thanks. Welcome. Bye. Bye.